Hello, in this video, we're going to do three things. We're going to start by answering a question that I received here on the channel. I'm going to do my best to answer it. As always, if you have any advice for this person, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Remember, people read the comments, and so when you leave a constructive comment, it does help other people. So yeah, leave positive comments. Two, I'm going to show you uh, one of my math books. I'm not sure which one yet. Uh, I have a lot of books, just random. I'm just going to pick one. I'm just going to show you some math books. And then three, at the end of the video, I'm just going to do a random math problem just to keep it fun. I always feel like when I watch YouTube videos, and I watch a lot of YouTube videos, some videos, you know, I like, some videos I don't like, but a lot of the videos I really like are the videos where I leave, like, I learned something. I didn't just, like, spend 20 minutes of my life watching a video, and, like, I just feel, like, empty, like, I didn't learn anything. So, <laughs> so I'm going to show you a math book, and at the very end... Um, we're going to do a math problem, just a random math problem. I'm just going to pick one to do it just so that if you watch the video that long, hopefully you learn something. Okay. Let's go ahead and read this message. The person's name is Ian and the message reads as follows. Hello, math sorcerer, big fan. I know you have lots of books. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to know out of all the books you have read regarding maths and science, what percent of the stuff you have learned do you think you remember? I'm sure someone had already asked a similar question. I just want to know what percent of math you could still do. Not sure. Thanks. Have a nice day. Ho oh, ho. Yeah. So this is actually one of the reasons I started my YouTube channel. So, um, in 2014, I started this YouTube channel, the math sorcerer, and I did it for two reasons. One, um, I've always wanted to have a YouTube channel. And for some reason I just I hesitated. I was scared. I didn't want to put myself out on the internet. It took me years for me to like appear in the video. I used to just do black screen videos. And so I wanted to start a YouTube channel because I wanted to make videos. And two, I also wanted to not forget all the math that I learned, you know, as an undergrad and as a grad student, right? Because if you don't use it, you lose it. And that's a reality. So you're going to forget it if you don't use it. That's the bad news. The good news is if you do a little bit of math every day, it stays with you, okay? It stays with you. If you just do a couple problems a day and read a little bit every day, it helps. Even if it's math you already know, okay? It's still worth doing. It's always good to learn new math and that's even better. So just try to get into the habit of doing a little bit every day, just doing a couple problems, just reading a little bit, even if it's only like 30 minutes or an hour, it's better than nothing. I try to think about it like going to the gym and like working out for a little while or doing some cardio. Like if I go to the gym and I get on the treadmill for 15 minutes, which is not long, I always feel a little bit better than before I went. I feel like I've accomplished something in my day. I feel like, hey, I got some exercise. People say it's good for you. It's the same thing with mathematics, I think. If you just do a little bit every day, I mean, obviously, if you do more, you'll learn more. But if you do a little bit every day, you're going to come out so much stronger. So that's my advice. Do a little bit every day and you really, you, you won't forget it. In fact, you'll learn more, right? You'll learn more because if you're consistent over time, you just keep learning and growing and growing. <sighs> I hope that helps. If anyone else has advice for Ian, please leave a comment in the comment section below. All right, let's do something else right now. So the book we're going to look at in this video is the Shams Outline series, Theory and Problems of Differential and Integral Calculus. And this one is by Frank Iris Jr. This one has 974 problems. This one's really old. Let me show you. This one's from 1950. Like, I don't even know they made Shams back then. I just assumed like they were like from the 60s. But yeah, copyright 1950 by the Sham Publishing Company. Frank Iris Jr. And here's the contents. So looks like it covers a bunch of calculus, right? All this, all this stuff is Calc 1 here so far. Curve tracing. Integration by parts is usually Calc 2. Trig integrals, that's usually Calc 2. Cool, right? All kinds of math. Let's turn the page here. Centroids, work, fluid pressure, that's also Calc 2 stuff. Infinite series. Partial derivatives, now we're in Calc 3. So you've got multivariable calculus here too. And you've got some differential equations. It's pretty cool. I feel like there's um, a couple topics missing from multivariable calc but you're getting mostly Calc 1, Calc 2, some Calc 3, and then you're getting some differential equations and stuff. So pretty cool. Yeah, let's look at some of the examples. Here's a solved problem where they find the interval of convergence 
of an infinite series. So they start by using the ratio test and they check the endpoints using other tests. So it's not um, super clear. For example, here it says for x equals one, the series becomes that and is convergent. It doesn't tell you why. That's actually a convergent um, alternating series, but that's something that maybe could have been added. For x equals negative one, you get that, which is, oh, I, I like that, minus one times the harmonic series, which is divergent. Pretty cool. So, you know, there are some little bit of, there just some slight gaps, but it's really clean. I like the layout. How about that typesetting, right? Very interesting typesetting. Expansion of functions, Maclaurin series. So Maclaurin series is basically a Taylor series centered at zero. So, and then here's the Taylor series. So if you put um, A equals zero in this formula, you get this one up here. Then here you have some solved problems. Cool. I feel like this Shams compared to other Shams is not as wordy. So like, this is a chapter 34 on moments of inertia. So this is all you have. And then it just jumps into it, right? Let's look at another chapter so you can see what I mean. So like fluid pressure, and then it jumps into the problems right away. So there's not much uh, in the way of, you know, like lots of reading, right? And work, same thing, right? You just go straight to the solved problem. So it's very, very concise. Let's pick another random section. Applications of indefinite integrals, right? So here you are, and then straight to the applications, right? So very, very um, problem-centered. I definitely say it's more problem-centered than other books. This is interesting, look at this, trig sub. So they give you the formulas, right? And then they just go straight to the problems. And I guess they don't need to give you examples because the examples are the problems, which I kind of like, honestly. Um, a lot of the other Shams books, they'll have like, you know, a definition, an example, a definition, an example. This one is a little bit more just like, here's what you need, here's the problem. So you start doing problems a little bit quicker with the Shams than with other Shams. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, pretty cool book. Um, I'll try to remember to leave a link in the description if I can find it. I'll leave a link to a newer version, obviously. This one's really old from 1950. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do a math problem. All right, we're gonna do a problem. We have to determine if this infinite series converges or diverges. So the first thing we're going to do is try to find a pattern for this infinite series. So you notice here there's a one, there's a two, there's a three, there's a four. There's a one, there's a two, there's a three, there's a four. So this is actually equal to the infinite sum as n runs from one to infinity. And it looks like it's going to be one over n times two to the n. It seems to be um, the series we're dealing with, right? And you can just check, if you plug in one, you get one, two to the one, there it is. If you plug in two, you get two, two to the two, there it is. Plug in three, you get three, two to the three, likewise with four, so all is good. So to determine whether this series converges, we're gonna use something called the ratio test. The ratio test says if you have an infinite series, say like this, and I'm just gonna omit where it starts, uh, just assume it's infinite, and you take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one over a sub n, and you get L. There's three cases. So if L is less than one, you have convergence. If L is bigger than one, you have divergence. If L is equal to one, you have no information. So this is a very powerful test called the ratio test. And this is used a lot uh, when studying power series, when you're looking for something called the interval of convergence. Okay, so in this problem, we first have to identify our a sub n, which is right here. So let's go ahead and write it out. Limit, n approaches infinity, and everything here is positive, so you don't really need the absolute value. You have to be careful though, normally when you're dealing with power series, you'll have like an X, and you don't know if X is positive or negative, so you do wanna leave the absolute value. However, in this case, we know N is always positive, and everything here is positive, so it's not necessary. But I'll, I'll write it anyways in the first step, just for good form. This is the limit, as N approaches infinity. So A sub N plus one, basically you go here and you plug in an N plus one, okay? So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and write down A sub N plus one. So all I've written down is this piece here. I'm going to say, hey, aren't you supposed to divide? Yeah, but when you divide, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So now we're just basically going to multiply by the reciprocal times n times two to the n over one. So this is equal to, notice I dropped the absolute value. 
So this simplifies here. There's some algebra. Look at this. You have 2 to the n over 2 to the n plus 1. This is 2 to the n over 2 to the n times 2 to the 1. You see that? Boom. This is 1 over 2. So this type of algebra you get really good at when you learn series. Basically, you take 2 to the n plus 1 and you break it up. And that's okay, right? Because when you multiply numbers with like bases, you add the exponents. So now this is going to become the limit as n approaches infinity. Okay, and then we have, um, we're left with just one half, right? So it'll just be, so these, these two to the n's cancel, so we're left with n, 2, n plus 1. As n gets really, 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 really big, this fraction gets really close to 1 over 2. And I know that because this is growing at the same rate as this, right? Because they're both linear. They both have the first, the first degree polynomials. So whenever the exponents match, the limit is the ratio of the leading coefficients. That's less than 1. So our series converges by the ratio test. So just to make that part clear, if it had been something like, let's just say you had something like this, 2n cubed plus n plus 7 over 4n cubed plus 8, in this case it'd be 2 over 4, which is 1 half, right? Because the degrees are the same. So whenever they match, you just divide the leading coefficients. If the number on the bottom is bigger, you get 0. So. Pretty cool. So simple problem, um, just, just ratio test application. Kind of fun because it was written this way. So we had to basically, um, you know, convert it uh, this to, into this and then, and then apply the ratio test. So, and again, this is used in power series uh, when you're looking for, um, you know, the, the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence. Really popular power series in case you're curious. So like e to the x. Um, its power series or its Maclaurin series is this one. Just show you some extra stuff, why not? And then there's one for sine and cosine, but that's that one's really important. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you've learned something. Good luck and take care.